I went on a residency in Luxembourg. And I just overheard conversation. The family were talking about adopting. You know, they were saying they preferred to, to adopt an Asian child because an, an Asian child has a better IQ level than an African child. I took it personal to a point where I was like, from now on, all the kids that I portray, I'm going to make them look smart. And the only thing that I could use as a metaphor, it was glasses. I would say they're the one who sort of contributed for me to realize later on because during my high school I wanted to be an engineer. I even got a buzzer to go and study uh, chemical engineering. So when I approached the work, I approached the work with the mentality of hoping that I would be able to have a voice that the next person is unable to, that they've always wanted to express themselves. Probably the same thing as how I connect with music and other movies. You listen to a piece of music that you're like, I don't know how that person has managed to be able to tell what I actually went through, but in a way that they tell it so beautiful that I don't, I don't mind listening to it over and over and over. That's probably the same thing that I think having to have the ability to create something that the next person will relate to it, that they, they feel that each and every day I can wake up to this as well. Can you just talk us through what's been going on here the last few minutes, this kind of wonderment that's evolved as well, everyone's been standing here. Uh, good afternoon, um, everyone. Um, I mean, usually when I'm in the studio, I'm alone. <laughs> and this is what I just want to take you guys through. Um, I mean, this is like my first sketch, it's not even in any way close to where I'm going to take it. It only took me later on to get to understand why kids are so drawn to cartoons because that's when my, my, my love of art actually started. Um, you told me you, you got into Japanese cartoons. Yeah, I got into, 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 into manga cartoons. And I think it, it, it was quite interesting because you, you even though I didn't even know who the artist was, but having to see you know simple lines and movement as well. And I mean, it, it, like at, at that time, the, the television was quite a small. I mean, I think like at home we had like 54 centimeter as well. And I, I mean, I remember my mother used to have a problem because I, at some point I wouldn't do my homework because I was actually going too much into cartoons. My subject matter is kids. It resonates with anyone. Any person, before they can even be an adult, they start to be a child as well. It's a language that anyone, any person can understand. If there's one thing that I felt that it represented my voice was portraiture. It's always been something about portrait in general. What a coincidence because also at the same time, the generation that we're living in is the generation that is so obsessed with selfies. Whatever emotion that I pour into a piece, others you know, connect it differently with that. As long as my work can start conversation, I think the only time when I will start being worried is when I create something that is offensive to the next person. If you're raised in a village, you were taught that someone who's elder than you 
you must always sexually respect them. And then you must greet them, regardless of whether you know them or you don't know them. So I think that's why I actually started picking up in terms of having to sort of start looking at expression of people. I think we are a reflection of each other. You will see through art, because art doesn't have boundaries in terms of, art doesn't have race, doesn't have all of those things. It can make two people to like just fall in love with something without really even having to sort of relate to anything like that. My love for portrait will always be, be that, and especially within kids, yeah, like, you know, how, how I also portray them. I portray them in the way that you can see is a face of a youth, but mature. I'm not focusing a lot on the technicality part of it, but I'm focusing more on capturing that moment that we all have that sometimes you can't even explain. Growing up in Mudimule is definitely will be like the place where I can say it's, it will always be. That is why it's probably one of the places where it's close to my heart. And I will never, like, regardless of um, how successful I will become or whether I become well known or anything like that, it will always be that one place that will always have a special place in my heart. My family were very political. There was one political party as well in South Africa. They were actually thinking post-apartheid that if they were to come to power, they won't call South Africa South Africa, they will call it Azania. But then when you look at Azania, Azania starts from Kenya to Tanzania, coming back to the southern part of Africa. That whole region was supposed to be Azania as well. I had the privilege to sort of travel throughout the southern region of Africa as well. A lot of references from the portrait that I actually did from the show was for all the people that I actually met that I never even had a conversation with, but I've managed to sketch from a distance. As a child of Azania, I'm now entering international stage, so I am proud to say I'm presenting the people where I come from, and I will carry them whenever I go. And for as long as I have that connection, wherever I go, they'll always be part of me. And that is why I titled the show The Souls of Azania.